Hi, I'm Dazzling One, and this week I'm going to be discussing black magic, generational curses in regards to spiritual warfare. Magic itself is defined as the power of influencing course of events by using mysterious or supernatural forces. Most will say that there are two types of magic, black and white magic. They differentiate them by saying that black magic is intended to cause harm and is evil, while white magic seeks to heal and not harm. However, both are nothing to mess around with because the power source is from Satan, the adversary. It doesn't matter whether they're saying that it's from a goddess or a god and this entity or that entity. All of these entities tie back to the Watchers, which in Genesis 6-4, when you read it, there was a time where they came down, they made it with the women, they produced hybrids, and these hybrids and the fallen angels set themselves up as gods and goddesses and introduced the mysteries that we know today as magic, and magic itself has a very dark history. Most, when they think of magic, are going to think of ritual or ceremonial magic because it's the most common. You see it on TV, Disney Channel, that kind of thing. Well, it is... The use of physical components like moves, gestures, words, objects, placement of objects, phase, time, part of the year, and so on. And in addition, in certain magical ritual systems, other factors may come into play like the moon. Because many will do their rituals based on the cycle of the moon. But magic itself is the manipulation of energy. So I'm going to let you for a minute let that sink in. So, keep science in mind. There is a law of conservation, and that is the total amount of energy in system remains constant and is conserved, although energy within the system can be changed from one form to another or transferred from one object to another. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transformed. So when you think about it, if energy can be neither created nor destroyed but just transformed, it explains the alchemy of magic itself in manipulating energy whether positive or negative. However, black magic, since it is rooted in a lot of darkness, it has nothing to do with positive energy. Magic itself shouldn't be used for anything positive. Even if someone thinks they're using it for something positive, it really will lead down a dark path. But another form of magic that most aren't familiar with is direct magic, and this oftentimes is used by practitioners of black magic and high-ranking occultists to inflict harm upon their victim. It's also called mental magic because they are consciously directing the parts of their mind that handle magic and driving magic without relying on external forces and are consciously selecting the external force when they channel. So, there are three parts with the manipulation of energy within magic. They raise the energy, so they will usually do this by way of meditation, and they will use runes. Maybe they will go outside where there's an abundance of ley lines, and maybe they'll do yoga or tai chi. Then they will program it. They will get in their mind what they want to do with this energy, what kind of energy it is, and then they will direct it at their source or at the victim. And then, of course, a hex is just another name for a curse within black magic. So, black magic uses objects as well. This is why we're probably most familiar with a voodoo doll or puppet. Sometimes it's made out of wax, and what they will do is they will find out as much about the victim as they can because it helps them with their craft. So, knowing their birth date helps because then they can use their sign they might want nail clippings, bodily secretions, traces of hair, and a picture. And it's not that hard in this day and age to get these things because with social media, everyone creates a profile and tells the world who they are, what they look like, and everything else. But the point of this is to get revenge, to punish someone, to inflict harm upon them, and many times to drive them crazy. And then they will sometimes drive needles into the, into the object to represent the person and they will cause harm on them if they're not protected or they will bury it because it's supposed to wear them away. So, within black magic, now that you understand what magic is and how 
they go about using the energy, it's important to understand the process, which we've gone over how they use objects, but the next huge step, and this is where most people find that they're being attacked, is that the practitioner will then have what they call a servitor, an imp, a familiar, or an egregore. And an egregore is an occultic concept representing a thought form or a collective group mind, which is an autonomous psychic entity made up of and influencing the thoughts of a group of people. It's also known as a tulpa, which is a magical emanation conjured thing and phantom. It is a concept in mysticism of a being or object which is created through sheer spiritual or mental discipline alone. So these spirits will bond with the mage and they will usually exchange something in return to carry out their dirty work. Last year when I put out the video about interdimensional beings, I discussed shadow people in brief and at the time I didn't know a whole lot about shadow people and people constantly write me that they see these entities and it's a very common phenomenon within the paranormal community but the thing about shadow people and I've come to believe this about a hundred percent is that they are what some may think of as astral vampires, energy vampires, psychic vampires, or egregores, or tulpa and some might ask what is an astral vampire Astro vampires, just as it sounds, it is a entity that travels on the astral plane. And what they will do is whenever an individual is sleeping, they will feed on their energy and take just enough so that the person is worn out and that they're fed, but not enough where the person's unable to function and they feed on their life force which within the occult a life force is supposed to be white and then as they feed away until death it turns black goes from white to gray to black but the thing is whenever psychic attacks were discussed about a couple months ago and I talked about how if you're waking up tired you're feeling worn out drained or you're being stalked by an entity you're probably undergoing a psychic attack the perpetrators of psychic attacks are these entities, these astral vampires, these shadow people, the practitioners of black magic, sending them to you. And the thing about it is that these beings will stand beside the bed or float on top of their energy source to feed on them. Some people say they feel something sitting on the chest, they call it the old hag or so forth, but many people report seeing shadow people during sleep paralysis. And while people can explain it away by saying that someone's laying down and they're stuck in between waking and REM and that your muscles are paralyzed and this is why you're hallucinating and hearing all these different things through hypnagogic and hypopopnic hallucinations. I believe that it is basically someone working black magic. Now some might ask, I don't have any ties to the occult, I'm a Christian or so before it, blah blah blah, I don't even believe in it. And honestly, it doesn't matter if you believe in it or you don't believe in it, whether you think it's right or you think it's wrong. Because whenever someone is selected to be a victim of black magic, they basically are caught in the crossfire and they have to be able to fight back. So, usually what happens is Satan will assign someone to someone for something and the person has something that they want. That's why they're feeding on their energy. This is why incubuses and succubuses come into play in this whole entire picture because incubuses and succubuses many people report having wet dreams or dreams about the perfect man or woman or being raped violently and the thing is this isn't just random sexual dreams this is actually a real spiritual affair and what happens is these spirits are using these dreams and using sex as a way of taking control or clinging to that person and feeding on their life force and this is where a lot of oppression and torment starts most people who suffer from incubus and succubus attacks will find that their life slowly falls apart slowly and it goes back to um, the whole ideal that sex itself is not just oh I lay down and I make love 
with spirits, it's about getting energy. And many people in the occult believe that whenever they have sex with someone, they can actually have power over them. They can manipulate the person through sex. Sex is a contract. This is why soul ties are formed. And when I was talking about how they will stand by the bedside or they will float over, when I was 12 and I began to experience sleep paralysis, the first thing I noticed was I felt something evil standing over me. And then at one point when I was 14, I actually saw the entities floating above my head. And they were pretty much trying to feed on my life force. And you know what? Things around me were falling apart. When as I was going through my teen years, I mean, just all this crazy stuff was happening to me. Did I do anything as I know to open the door? No. But these things wanted to feed. And I would actually have dreams sometimes before the sleep paralysis or after it where I saw whoever was working the witchcraft, sending the entities. So I know this is a real thing, but um, another thing to keep in mind is that in sleep, you're more open to suggestion. This is where false memories, um, dreams that invoke certain emotions, or what I call problem-solving dreams because my mom complained about having these, but are dreams where you dream that you're solving this problem all night and then a new problem presents itself as soon as you solve it and basically it's meant to wear you out it's like a horrible maze that you can't get out of this is another form of a psychic attack it's also proof that black magic and what some might call a shadow person an astral vampire or a demon is coming to you and trying to feed on your energy and what happens is they send these things to stick to your aura and to feed on you or to go back into an object and this is why people end up with cursed objects and the only way they can feel better is to get rid of it and then the demon's gone but if it sticks to you then you're severely being oppressed and you need deliverance which doesn't mean oh I need a demon cast out of me it means that the person needs whatever lifted out off their aura so the thing is in Matthew 13 25 it talks about but while men slept his enemy came and so tears among the wheat and went his way so right there, the enemy in this regard is Satan. It's talking about Satan and how when you're asleep, this is the most opportune time for the wicked to sow their seeds. This is why most occultists do better at night. This is why we have the witching hour. Heightened paranormal activity at this time. So, one thing that my grandmother always used to say is that Satan will try to weary out the saints. And really, that is true. When you look at Daniel 7.25, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and a dividing of time. Whenever I did the CERN, Fallen Angels and Portal video, I believe, I discussed this scripture in regard to if sir or anyone was going to try to manipulate time in the future of the antichrist basically and i talked about some dreams i had where i traveled time in my sleep and i said did i really travel time in my sleep was it a deception what was it and the thing about it is looking at when it says he wearies out the saints this is by way of black magic the antichrist is going to be well versed in black magic if you look at Daniel 8.23, it says, And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Right there is referring to the Antichrist when it says fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences, he shall stand up. So clearly he's going to be have a pretty fierce or rough face and he's going to understand dark sentences. So when you think about dark sentences, curses, enchantments, spells. He's going to know how to inflict psychic attacks. Why do you think people are going to follow him? Um, he's going to know how to manipulate. Manipulation is a form of witchcraft because in order to do magic you have to be able to manipulate. Magic itself isn't just abracadabra, poof, mystical mumble jumbo. No, it is psychological warfare. That's real magic there. Black magic attacks your psyche. It attacks your mind. It attacks your brain. When someone sends out these imps, these entities, these psychic vampires, these shadow people, their job is 
not just to oh stick to you but it's to attack your mind literally put thoughts into your head cause dreams get you to be sleep deprived when you're sleep deprived your cognitive functions are down you don't think as fast you are worn out you're crankier you're not as efficient it causes you to be slower it causes you to feel cranky it leads to depression it affects certain parts of the brain psychiatry seeks to explain this phenomenon and while some believe that certain drugs and psychosurgery and psychotherapy and electroshock therapy and all this can help it really if someone would just be delivered think about the bible whenever Yeshua came and he healed many demoniacs and he healed legion he was a man who cut himself he was a man who was basically chained up he was crazy he was considered insane before Yeshua came what happened to possessed people they were thrown in an asylum they were locked up and that was the end of it today we take quote unquote ill people and we and we um, send them to counseling we drug them and all of that but his whole ministry was helping deliver people who were victims of black magic so one thing to keep in mind is that what you think is important because while some think that their thoughts don't matter, it's like I said a few weeks back, you will act upon your thoughts. Back to the law of attraction. Same thing with this energy stuff. Um, when you look at Proverbs 18.21, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So what you say does matter. If you have negative thoughts and negative emotions, you need to start not thinking those ways and all of that because you will act upon it you will feel that way it's kind of like it goes back to that whole thing about what you think about yourself is how others will see you it's true because subconsciously you're acting out the things that you think about yourself without even knowing it I have in the past had the tendency to behave pretty awkwardly I'll admit like if you know me in person, I'm a pretty awkward person. And so as soon as I think, man, I'm awkward, it only makes the situation worse. So I had to train myself to say, okay, even though I have been awkward in the past, I'm not awkward. And I know it sounds like it's denial, but it's not because literally I will begin to do weird gestures and things. And so the point is, guard your tongue, guard your heart, because you do not want to make your reality something negative. And... Part of black magic is attacking your perception of your reality, but also attacking how you see yourself, see the world, and your psyche. And this is why when people need deliverance, they need to pray against anything that's stuck to their aura, who's stuck to their mind, that's stuck to their psyche. The reason practitioners of black magic go after the brain is because it controls so many functions of your body. Since you have multiple lobes, frontal lobe, temporal lobe, parietal, occipital, which control your sight, your hearing, your speech, your emotions, your thoughts, your dreams, your desires, your pain, your pleasure, everything, it can cause you to become a different person. It can bend your will, but it can also deteriorate your health. It can make you slower. It can weaken you. And this is why they do so, because they know that if they attack your brain or psyche, that it's almost inevitable that the person will collapse at some point and will face destruction. Also, with this in mind, the reason why so many of them make this a prolonged process is because A, they can't just instantly get the results that they want. As much as they would like to go abracadabra, poof, and the person's gone, they can't do that. There's a rule that they're not supposed to um, go after someone who has a stronger aura than they do. However, many times they do go after someone who has a stronger aura, and this can backfire on them, and they know that, and this is why they're so um, adamant about cleansing themselves all the time, because they're afraid that it could backfire. And so what they will do with someone that they know is a stronger aura than them is they will continually cleanse themselves, but they will wear them out over and over and over and over attack after attack after attack and they might use other people to attack after attack after attack until that person is wary and they're weak enough for them to go in for the kill and think about it this way if you have an enemy which is easy which would you desire more for them to be hurt instantly or for it to be a painful long suffering process and most people would say they want their enemy to suffer a long time and remember these people are operating off of hatred. 
This leads me into what some might think of as the evil eye, which eyes are the windows to the soul. I believe Shakespeare coined the phrase. But people say this, but the thing is in the occult, they say that because the eyes are connected to the brain, you can't actually see the brain, but you can see the eyes. It's the greatest, fastest place to the brain. So um, basically, um, some believe that Negative emotions can be transferred to an individual like jealousy, anger, hate, fear, or someone can be mesmerized or hypnotized just by simply looking in someone's eye. Within Jewish mysticism in the Zohar, many Kabbalists who wear a red string around their wrist do so for a means of protection because they believe the Zohar, it says that a person possessed of an evil eye carries with him jealousy and envy a destroying force be on your guard not to come near him he may injure you so pretty much they do this because they think by doing this it's going to protect them or it's going to put up a wall from the negative energy which I don't recommend any talisman or any good luck charms or anything like that. enchantments you don't need any of that you just need to plead the blood of Jesus over you or plead the blood of Yeshua and you should be fine the thing is eyes do play a part as well and I actually want to share an experience speaking of eyes because yesterday, I, not yesterday, but Monday, I was shadowing. And as I was shadowing, you know, it was a very good experience. I, it was my first time outside of the operation room because usually I'm in the operation room. But this time I was actually in the clinic seeing patient after patient with the doctor. And it was a whole new experience, and I see why a lot of people who practice black magic like to collect energy or feed on the energy of hospitals because there's so much death, despair, hopelessness, just like grave sites. And it's sad that there are some people that would actually work in a hospital to feed on that energy and hurt patients, just like there are people who infiltrate churches. But getting off topic again, but as I was there, I learned a whole lot. It gave me a new perspective, and after I was done, I was sitting in the lobby, and there was two individual couches and then one long couch where, you know, few people could sit on. And, of course, out of the corner of my eye, I saw someone plop down across from me, so I naturally looked up to see who it was. And it was a man, and he had severe discoloration to his face, and I thought maybe he had some kind of sickness, you know, illness of some sort. And... Something about his eyes were just, it's like his bone structure within his face as well. It was just so twisted. But it didn't look just deformed. It looked demonic. I'm not kidding. This man looked demonic. And his eyes looked really messed up as well, but messed up in a demonic way. And he was looking for something or someone. He just kept looking, but he never dared look at me. And then he looked at these people who were walking by, and I saw him give them this most demonic look. And I was just like, ew, I don't like the way this is happening so I began to pray about this whole situation a few minutes later the guy he hopped up and he started to leave so as he was leaving I looked at him as he was leaving and he turned back around very quickly like he was hissing at me and he locked eyes with me and he, it's like he was trying to intimidate me with his eyes and send fear and in that moment I just thought about Yahweh I just thought about Yeshua and I'm telling you this guy he literally winced away like he had been shot and he ran out of the hospital and I believe I was dealing with a demoniac. I believe there was someone who was, who had demons on them. And I feel like whenever you're looking into this stuff, you're finding out about this stuff, that Satan will send people to come hinder you or stop you from knowing more about it. But you have to be careful as well because you don't want to get so embedded in trying to understand this that you get sucked into it. That's another thing. And so I just was thinking about how... Yeshua is more powerful than Satan. doesn't matter what people say. Um, he has to flee. And that leads me into a dream I had that same night I went to bed and I, I began just to pray against anything that had tried to stick to me over the years because, like I've said in the past, someone as someone who's dealt with emotional abuse, emotional abuse is manipulation. Last week when I talked about how the way manipulators, the tactics they use to manipulate, you'll realize that emotional abusers are manipulators, and manipulation is a form of witchcraft. They were creating this negative energy, it was sticking to everyone's auras. This is why a lot of people reenact the abuse that they um, saw as a child, or they end up going into a situation. This is why 
these people are attracted to them, it's because someone has worked enough witchcraft, enough of this negative energy, and it's on them, that those people can sense it a mile away, and they're attracted to it. That negative energy like attracts like in this case. So I begin to pray against all of that, and that it would be broken, and everything else of that nature, and just for other people as well. And suddenly, um, you know, when I went to bed, of course, I had this dream that I was at school, and all this past trauma, I'm talking about stuff from when I was like six or seven, almost half, less than half my lifetime ago, um, was happening to me, like past trauma, past pain. And then it's like they were offering me food in the dream. Now, keep in mind with food that you should never eat in your dream. Now, I know this is hard because some will say, how can you control yourself from eating in a dream? Because unless you're lucid, you can't really control yourself, can you, in a dream from eating? Well, the reason I say not to eat is because many spirits try to attach themselves in dreams by giving you food, just like incubus and succubuses try to attach themselves by um, acting like they're your spouse or your girlfriend or boyfriend or raping you in a dream, the same way they'll use food. Um, in Proverbs 23.3, it says, Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. And, of course, this isn't just talking about in the natural because in the natural there are people who practice black magic who will make dishes and will give gifts I knew people who were into black magic and they would give us gifts all the time I never thought to get rid of them but as soon as I got rid of these gifts half of the tax I had just ceased right away so in a, even in a dream you don't want to take food from anyone in a dream there's really no reason or you should be eating in your sleep in the first place there's really no purpose of eating in a dream. But in the dream I ate and I said, this tastes like nothing. And then the girl was like, yeah, it doesn't taste like anything. And then she's like, well, you want some of my gum? And I'm like, no, I don't want any of your gum. And then I remember later there was a guy in my dream who tried to be basically play the role of my boyfriend. Like he was trying to be my boyfriend in the dream. And it was funny because... I totally felt creeped out by this guy. I didn't like this guy. I mean, he kept trying to talk to me and all of that. And I mean, it was an attractive guy, but the thing was, something was just really off about him. And then I ended up with a wishbone. Now, any of you guys who know, like, wishbones, you break it in half. Whoever has the biggest piece gets good luck or gets to make a wish. I, I remember I used to, like, believe and do that stuff when I was a kid. But now I'm wary of doing anything like that. But... In the dream, I had a wishbone, and he wanted to break it with me. And the thing was, wishbones in the occult in, can be used for love spells. And so I believe this was someone who was either astral projecting into my dream or a literal entity. And he was trying to trick me into making covenant or bonding with me. And of course, I didn't take the wishbone. I literally got rid of it, and I left. And then later, the person who caused the emotional abuse, I had to encounter them in the dream again. And they start telling me the same stuff, trying to make me feel negative. And of course, it's like in the dream, suddenly, I began to just remember Yahweh, and I began to just testify against them, literally. Like, I stood over them, and I started just testifying against the evil inside of them, and they literally fell backwards. And I began realizing that every time that they said something about me, because Yeshua lived inside of me, that they were saying it about him as well, and it wasn't true. So, you know, if they called me names, it's not true about him. So, the point is... It got into my spirit the things that I had been studying, and it was able to come out in the dream, and I was able to fight back. It's sad that I didn't eat the food in the dream, but the point is, when you put praise, you put worship, you put um, the word, because you're supposed to meditate on the word day and night, um, scriptures, not just memorize scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture, because it's like memorizing material for a class, and then as soon as you are done with the class, you've taken the test, you forget it. No, you're supposed to keep it in your heart. You're supposed to know it. It's supposed to be engraved. What we put into ourselves is very important. This goes into the whole entire black magic discussion. Television is used as one of the biggest weapons. Music is used as one of the biggest weapons, because like it or not, it gets inside of us. It gets in our heads. It gets in our subconscious. It makes it easier for us 
to succumb to certain things. This is why television constantly promotes negativity. This is why when you turn on most daytime TV shows now, there's some kind of spell enchantment in it or some kind of sexual innuendo. This is why when you watch the news, it's nothing but negativity, negativity, negativity. Plane went missing, plane crash, terrorist attacks, racial violence, all of that because they want to produce negativity. They want to get people to be on this hive mind of negative emotions. It makes their black magic easier. So really what I'm saying is know the word, keep it in your heart, and trust me, whenever you start to dream, you will start to combat it. And this leads me into the last topic, which is generational curses. There's a lot of misconceptions about generational curses, but just in brief, a generational curse is when it is believed that through no fault of your own, within your family there seems to be some kind of curse of some sort, whether it's everyone in your family is predisposed to alcoholism, everyone in your family is a druggie, everyone in your family is either been abused or is the abuser, everyone in your family is in this or that and a lot of these generational curses are brought on by people's involvement in cults, fraternities, sororities and um, substance abuse and sexual immorality and all kinds of things. Just sharing my personal experience with generational curses on both sides of my family um, especially I know for a fact my grandfather he died when I was like four before I could even meet him he was an alcoholic. There's been drug abuse on my in my family. There has been people who have involved themselves with the occult, sexual immorality, abuse, about anything you can think of negative. And most families have their quote unquote skeletons. On my father's side of the family, before because they're Mexican, before the Spanish came and they colonized um Mexico, they were from the Otomi tribe, and they actually fled into the mountains and they didn't mix with the Spanish. And so, what happened was, in order for them to become citizens, they were also converted to Catholicism. And when they were converted to Catholicism, they were supposed to take on a Spanish last name. So, what happened with this is, even though they might have had the religion, there are people, and this happened in many colonies, many of the people still stuck to their old religions. And I don't think Catholicism is a very mob religion itself. And it does definitely leave room for people to practice brujeria and santeria and all of that. But um, even with voodoo and everything else like that. And so one interesting thing that I'll have to admit is that I really... I was talking to someone about this because whenever I was in philosophy we were talking about Malcolm X and he talked about how most black Americans do not know their last name and that's true because on my mother's side, since my mom's black, I'm half black, um, I don't know my last name on that side because most people who were slaves were giving the last name of their master and so basically as a form of property and so they probably originally didn't even have a last name and then of course on my father's side they had to take on a Spanish last name so in reality I don't know what my original last name is if I even had a last name because most Native Americans indigenous people did not take on uh, I mean did not have a last name to begin with it was more of a concept for Europe in order to keep track of people so a name does have a lot of value in terms of how you identify yourself this is why some people think about what they name their child and it does play a part and so that's one thing to look into is even your name what your meaning of your first and your last name is or your middle name or any extended names as well because it can play into how your life is and some people even wait a few days to name their child and one other thing before I get back to um, talking about generational curses is that I know some people believe that some of the tribes of Israel were scattered into the Americas and some of them were slaves and some of them were some of the indigenous tribes. It is interesting when you look at Deuteronomy 28 and it talks about the different curses, but once again, if that were the case, and these were generational curses, if this is true, then um, if a person realizes and they're saved and they accept Yeshua, then any of those curses should be broken for them and their family.
not for everybody, but for those people that realize it. So that's another thing to keep in mind as well. Most when looking at generational curses, look at Exodus 34, 7, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiven iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. Many people take that and they think about the third and fourth generation. Some people are dedicated to Satan before they're born as some other entity, which is a person may not know that. Um, if that is the case, then it can be broken. It really can. It doesn't, the person doesn't have to be under that. Um, I just want to read you, and I know it's, we, I always read this scripture, but it really is important. Ephesians 6, 12 through 19, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So right there, it talks about the different things you need for spiritual warfare in order to wrestle against not flesh and blood, not the people you see, but against the entities being sent at you. Yes, there are black magic practitioners who are sending these entities. Keep that in mind. But initially, all of their supposed power comes from the entities that they're being used by. While they think they're using them, truth is they're using, the entities are using them. These people are people who are severely demonized and they honestly need their own form of deliverance, even if they don't want it. Um, so, Right there it talks about in verse 13 to take the whole armor of God. And it also talks about having your loins girt with truth. So truth. Tr real truth, not, you know, like the truth, truth hurts kind of truth. <laughs> having the breastplate of righteousness. So righteousness is another one. And your feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. So once again, the gospel of peace and a shield of faith. Faith is so important. So many people forget faith. In order for these people to do black magic and be effective, they need faith in theirs. Think of the law of attraction. We need faith. If we're going to be able to stand against the enemy. Spiritual warfare is just that. Warfare means ongoing battles. It never stops. There's no happily ever after. I remember thinking, oh, one day I'm going to just have this perfect ending. No. As long as I'm alive, there is no perfect ending per se. So, and then of course, um, the helmet of salvation. We need to know that we are saved, that we aren't condemned. Because one of the things black magicians like to do is make it seem as if you're condemned, you can never be forgiven, you're in sin. No, as long as your heart is right, you can. You don't need to condemn yourself. Um, and the sword of spirit, of course. And of course, we need to be led by the Holy Spirit as well. And really, all of this is important. Um, but I hope that you guys learned something from this. I know that with everything I do, I always have a tendency to feel like I ramble. And then, of course, I just always want to make sure that I lay a very firm foundation. But, like I said, this is, hopefully this will help anyone who has been victimized by black magic. If you would like to share personally, you can email me or message me on Facebook, Twitter, or any other social media form I have on the About page of the channel. But I just want you guys all to know that you're free and you don't have to put up with any of this and to really plead the blood of Yeshua over your life and your loved ones' lives as well. And like I said, I always pray for all of you guys. And I'd like to thank you for watching. And I hope it's been a blessing and a help to you. And I'll talk to you next week. Take care and Yahweh bless you.